This is a video that I think I'm really excited for just because we don't get to demonstrate Unify on products very much or we don't see that happen when it comes to um, gradient maps. So I thought this was a very, very interesting example on how we could take Unify and match up liquor, for example. In this photo uh, provided by Dave Schick, we have this bottle here in this glass. And what you notice is the idea is that the bottle and the glass should have the same color components and they're different. And so obviously this might be very purposeful, um, but I'm just curious to see, can Unify work to match the color of the glass and the bottle itself? Obviously the bottle might look different just because the coating of the bottle has a different color to it or whatever it is. But let's say we wanted to do that as an example. I might actually take the color of the liquid in the glass and match up to the bottle because we can see the top of it, it, it is amber and this is more like red. So let's just see what happens. And again, as I mentioned, this is probably not the brief, but if it is, could it be possible? What I'm actually going to do here is select the lasso tool. And if you're not familiar with any of the functionality of Infinite Unify, you can simply just follow along with the settings that I use. And if you want to learn more about the settings, just click on the description of this video or go to infinite-tools.com to learn more about how to use these functions because I talk so much about all these other tools within Unify as well as other videos going over many other examples. But for this example, I'm going to use H as my blend mode, which is hue and the mask, which is going to be add a black mask because I, I'm using hue because I like the saturation levels going across. I don't want to really tamper with that, but I do want to shift it so it's closer to these amber tones. So with that being said, I'm going to actually use my lasso tool and like hover over this area here. So it gets a nice selection. I'm going to select create. And you can see here, um, I'm keeping my smoothness at 50. You can leave that there and uh, gradient map selection at five. So it has a nice transition. The hue itself, I'm not touching. Then I'm going to click on my mask option. And then I'm going to go over to my brush. Um, I'm going to keep my opacity at 100. Then my flow, I'll just keep to whatever it is, um, something quite high so it comes in really quickly. Then my brush tool, I'll keep my hardness at 0%. And then I'll just simply start brushing. Just like that. And you can see now it pairs up actually with the top of the bottle really well while keeping the saturation nice and very similar to the original bottle saturation, which is kind of my intention. If I wanted to, I could also change that to the color blend mode. But for now, I think, you know, these, these beautiful uh, saturation, I think I like it a lot. So I'm just going to keep that there. And there we go. Let's turn that on and off. And you can see that without much work at all, we were able to shift the actual set, the actual um, tone of the, of the uh, liquor to, to match precisely with what's in the glass. And of course, you could also do the invert as well, where if I painted it here like this, and obviously nothing happens because that the colors we selected, so it shouldn't really change too, too much. But if I wanted to, I could actually shift this hue here. And what happens is it shifts the hue to something completely different. So you can see here, if I bring it all the way to the left, now the hue is going to be more red because shifting this hue here, to the left makes the colors that we selected in the gradient more red equally in every single step. So that's, just, that's what this hue does. If I go to the right, it makes it more yellow and brown. And this way you can see it makes it more red. And it, you don't have to reselect anything. It just does it for you automatically. So now when I turn this on and off, you'll notice that the color in the glass changes more than the color in the bottle. Now the color in the bottle is kind of what it was like originally. So you could do so much with this. You can actually make a mask of both the drink and the the bottle and then shift the hue to whatever kind of shade you want and they will all match up with each other perfectly and just like that let's look at it i now have a really nice color here which matches closer to here and that's that so thank you dave schick who uh, provided this image and if it wasn't for him and this beautiful example I don't know if I would be able to find a better one. So thank you. If Again, if you want to learn more about Infinite Unify and all the ways that you can use it, just simply go to infinite-tools.com and check it out. Now let's go on to our second example. Here we have another image that uh, Dave shot. And one thing that I kind of found very fascinating was 
Over here on the label itself, we have a nice label, but the ends get really kind of saturated here. And I want to match the saturation of, say, the label here in the middle. So we can actually use um, the panel to do that and also do multiple gradient maps. And I'll show you why. For example, the second part I've, I'm finding interesting is going to be the the colors here, which I want to match closer to here. So we're going to do two things, OK? First thing we'll do is we'll make a little sample point here if you want. And uh, you can also hold shift and make more sample points if you want to like this and then hit create. And again, I've just used uh, hue as a blend mode and the black mask. And I can also change that uh, to saturation instead. What's going to happen now as I brush, let me just use 100% flow and bring my opacity to 100 is you'll notice that the saturation level will match what I selected. And I can do this across, you know, with the parts of the, the label that I want to even out. Now the saturation levels will match whatever I selected. And that's what the saturation is often for. And now you can see here that that looks a lot cleaner. If I want to brighten that up, I simply just need to add, say, like a dodge layer if I want to is uh, something from my retouching series. If you're interested in learning more about retouching in general, I'll link that in the description too. But you can see here that, you know, it increases the, the way it looks. And you don't have to do that because obviously the luminosity changes kind of how it, it wraps around. Um, I, it doesn't matter what kind of order you put it in. It does a little bit, but um, not so much right now because we're not doing too much of a change. Next, what I'll go ahead and do is if I want to say add another unify, I'm going to click on, I'm going to do another highlight selection anywhere like that. And I want to take this level or these tones and kind of match it here so that it doesn't look any different. Then I'm going to hold Alter Option and then click on Create like that. And it'll add another unify layer on top. Um, what I want to do instead of saturation, I'm going to click on color. So then the blend mode will automatically change the color of, of, of what we're working on. I'll increase my opacity to 100, increase my opacity to 100 here, and flow to 100, I should say, not opacity. Um, and then I'm just going to start brushing like that. So you can see that it actually kind of really takes into account whatever we selected and those colors. And if you want to keep some of that there, you can by reduce opacity. Or if I want, I can also change the you know, the um, hue here, if I want to I'll increase the opacity here real quick like that and, uh, and reduce the opacity as well. So I think that looks a lot more realistic than it was before. You can see that yellow subdued and the label is really nice. Let's turn that on and off the before and after really quick. You can see how that looks. You can see the label looks a lot cleaner now. It looks very spe spectacular, I should say. And it does a very nice job with just a few selections. You don't have to be a mask at selecting colors or anything like that. You simply select what you like, apply it, and pick your blend modes and opacities, and you're off to the races. So I hope you like that. Um, and again, if you want to see more, just go to the website and check it out or look at the description. I'm excited to see what you all do. And if you are interested in sharing, please check out our group at Infinite Tools on Facebook, where you can submit your own images or tag us on Instagram as well.